songs and felicitations. Okay, the first round. Boom. <laughs> and oh, geez, that was just boom. unnecessary. You can't, you can't be out of range. Greetings and felicitations, YouTube. Yarl the Appian Way here with a line of Salamis Spearmen. Why did I bring a line of Salamis Spearmen? Well, because I got matched up in the quick battles against Dardania, a player who instantly chose Dardania, and whose name was simply Tom. All lowercase letters, Tom. And I had to sit there and think for a minute and go... This might be that core guy that everybody's been talking about. I'm just gonna plan that he might have changed his name. <laughs> and he's going by Tom. And and so I decided a line of five Salamis Spearmen because of their um their expert uh uh charge defense. And then the map I didn't feel like it necessitated too many chariots because there wasn't a lot of avenues of approach. I did bring one heavy chariot of my own, and I did stealthily deploy it. And then I brought a glorious Neotolemus, a pair of armored giant spearmen with one XP chevron apiece to help me deal with opposing chariots and far-seeing Archilocos. And my hero is a fighter Ravager, who I brought on foot to support the main line. My opponent picked four units of Dardanian Rabble. He's actually very smartly deployed them, I'd say, in positions where you know he could hide them. And uh, he's brought... I'm sorry, there's a fifth Dardanian Rabble right in the front of the army. He's also brought six renowned Dardanian Sworn Fighters, three Dardanian Chargers, his hero's a Warlord Mentor on foot. Yes, he is. And he's brought a harpy fiend well i have a harpy fiend of my own we'll just see about that i'm not sure what's going on graphically here the um the banner for the harpy fiend is solid black i i, I don't know what that's about uh if anybody else knows it hit me up anyway let's get into this battle so even if my opponent wasn't core we could see that this guy is actually affected the I'm not gonna say the meta, but at least the the style of play for other players because this is very much just like what we would expect to see with you know some some differences. Three Dardanian Chargers and six renowned Dardanian Sworn Fighters is a big deal. So at this stage, I do see that he's been moving around some of his Dardanian rabble, and I've been moving some of my forces to 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 compensate i'm perfectly willing to use some armored giant spearmen to fight rabble uh, i feel like these are engagements that are going to go well for me first seeing Archilocos here i don't want her to get caught just yet i'd like to be able to use her in a more impactful area i do have my salamis spearmen up here let's take a look at their missile block chance it's 75 percent and uh i don't know it yet but i am soon going to be eating a bunch of harpy fiend javelins and i know better than to just sit here and take it so yeah, I found the uh, the Dardanian rabble. I'm comp completely content to just push them back and continue chasing them. I'm now under fire from these javelins, and I will not sit here for very long. I will push up into this, and I do I do know that there's a uh, Dardanian rabble pushing up towards these trees, and that's going to expose my reinforced chariots. So not only am I going to move up with the Salus Spearmen, but I'm also just going to go ahead and attack with my my uh, heavy chariot. I do have a significant advantage on this battlefield knowing that i have those chariots and pretty sure that my opponent does not because i had an uphill position in a general generally speaking and there's nowhere really that he could hide his chariots because you cannot hide chariots in trees so i've got a significant advantage now, because I was aware of the positioning of some Harpy Fiends out here, I'm going to go ahead and just turn my uh, Farseeing Archilocos and my Armored Giant Spearmen away from all of the uh, Dardanian Rabbles and try and get to get their assistance to help me push these Harpy Fiends. He's forced to pull back, and I get an opportunity to just kind of control the flanks, beat up some more Rabble with my Armored Giant Spearmen. No big deal for me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start eating some more Javelins, however, but I'm going to go ahead and get these forces into position Meanwhile, Chariot is doing exactly what you would expect it to be doing, and that's eating Dardanian Rabble for lunch. Now, 
I'm, I'm, when I see that he, he sets his forces up like this to charge individually, I go ahead and I just put all of my Salamis Spearmen in guard mode. I'm just sitting here going, I am not falling for this from a different player or potentially the same player. He does also get a Dardanian Rabble out here to fight Farseeing Archilocos, and I'm totally okay with this. Farseeing Ar Archilocos is actually a very good melee character, a very, very good melee unit. And it's going to destroy that Dardanian Rabble, no problem. But what I'm not doing so well with are my Armored Giant Spearmen. They've taken the attention of a giant, uh, I'm sorry, of a, uh, armor, of a Dardanian Charger and this renowned Dardanian Sworn Fighter, and now he has these uh, Rabble in position to just chase off my uh, Armored Giant Spearmen, but that's okay. I'm, I'm feeling alright about this because I know I don't need them. I had an extra unit down here on the flank, so I'm going to go ahead and use it to go ahead and rear attack. My opponent is wise to it, though. He's going to pull his forces off. And remember, I do have my guys in guard mode, so they're not just going to, um, you know, let themselves get pulled into bad engagements. Um, he's going to go ahead and try and charge me here. I'm going to go ahead and take it. Again, remember, expert charge defense. You're going to see here their charge animations actually get stopped. Um, rather than having them be an impactful force, they're just going to kind of sit there and take it. He's doing a very good job of changing up his targets with the Harpy Fiends. He's going to try and flank around behind me, and I'm prepared for it, so I'm going to go ahead and move up my Salamis Spearmen. They're going to kind of get themselves caught up here, but they're going to also prevent this unit from flanking. I feel like I handled this situation really well. I really don't like those uh, Javelins coming in at me. Um, he does get his... Uh, his rabble away from Farseeing Archilocos, and Archilocos now has to deal with the Dar renowned Jordanian Sworn Fighter. Not ideal for Archilocos, they're going to take too many casualties here. And what I really need is for my chariots to stop getting caught up in all of these rabble. As you can see, I've actually taken a ton of damage because of the low uh, melee defense that I got while fighting in those little bits of trees over there. I'm going to go ahead and catch, intercept this guy's charge again. Uh, expert charge defense, a fantastic reason to bring Salma Spearmen. They just don't care about your charges. I, I grab the attention of three units here, including the Harpy Fiends. Harpy Fiends have been able to spend all of their ammo, have not been able to route anyone. As you can see, I got Glorious Neotolomus up in here, mostly dealing with a Dardanian Charger. Finally, no, my chariots are free at about a third health. And in the meantime, I'm actually losing some engagements. Uh, that was uh, a very tired Salma Spearman, and, well, not that tired. Just overwhelm Salamis Spearmen. Renowned Sardinian Sword Fighters are still a very good unit, but as you can see, I've gotten control of this engagement over here, shattered that one, and I'm able to turn him around just in time to intercept this charge, and here comes my chariot. Three minutes, uh, less than four minutes left in this fight, and I've got a lot of work to do. As you can see, I did get, um, first seeing Harkalokas did get the advantage of these Sword Fighters and this Rabble, so I'm going to go ahead and take that one to the bank. Um, and I have regrouped renowned Jordanian sworn fighters that have hit the battlefield. Yeah, they're no match for the chariots. Chariots are going to take damage through all of this, and they are also going to take a little bit of morale hit. They're very tired from having to run all over all those rabble, but they're doing just fine. I'm going to try and get in here. As you can see, some of my Salamis spearmen have routed. Um, I, I don't want to just go ahead and charge Dardanian chargers in the open field with heavy chariots because they are a heavy infantry. I do terrify this um, Dardanian charger, though, then rear attack it with my chariots, hoping I can get a quick KO. I'm really hoping for it, and there it is, even with the Heraclean Roar. The Heraclean Roar does not help their, uh, their morale any. It allows me to just run right over this with my chariots, but look how poorly my chariots' morale is now. Just from that momentary foray into the heavy infantry, I've got to get in here into the backs of these units. This is all light and medium infantry. Huge hit from the chariot, taking out a ton of health on these units. Charging right on through, getting into the next uh, Redon Titanian Sworn Fighter. But it is looking really bleak for me without the support of all of my um, my injured and broken Salamis Spearmen. I'm trying to get them back into the fight in a meaningful way. I'm trying to bail out this Salamis Spearmen, trying to just deal with this uh, renowned Dardanian Sworn Fighter. They, they break that uh, Dardanian Rabble. But I'm up here with 329 kills on this Heavy Chariot. He's got a lot of work to do. I get another Terrify out on another Dardanian Charger because I've activated my Aristea. It's giving me a huge um, you know cooldown buff. Look at this, though. They managed to to rally and cry, which is exactly what he needed to keep his forces in here. Glorious Neotolomus with only six units left, but Seize the Moment has also been activated. So um, I'm, I'm taking some some hefty, hefty uh, 
penalties here. This re regrouped Dardanian Charger is back in the fight, though, and that's a problem for my reinforced chariots. I do break this Dardanian Sworn Fighter. This Salamis Spearman is on the way out. I put this uh, Salamis Spearman into charge mode, but as you can see, all of my units that were here have completely broken, so I'm actually kind of in trouble. I don't have enough forces here to deal with all of these Dardanian Chargers. I do have this re this really hurt first seeing Archilocos trying to get back into this fight, and my chariots, I'm now counting on them to do everything in this battle but look at this they take hefty damage from the last javelin on that dardanian charger and that actually is going to route them i can't keep them around with all this heavy infantry but heavy infantry is the only thing i have left to handle and yeah the the writing's on the wall if you can't tell already i just don't have enough tools i really don't i put my hero into um into aries's rage allowing his uh, morale to hold. Oh, I'm trying to get Farseeing Arca Locos up here to use some of her javelins into this blob. Maybe give my reinforced chariots a chance to regroup. He sees Farseeing Arca Locos coming, however. He's going to try and intercept with the Dardanian rabble. I'm just hoping I can route them with fear-causing javelins, and it doesn't work. That shatters that unit, and we can really just go ahead and wrap this battle up now. You are losing ground. It was just really unfortunate. I felt like I had a good strategy. And it didn't play out for me in the end, but uh, hey, you know, hats off to my opponent. Uh, I felt he played very well considering this scenario. Um, chargers are a tough force to meet, but there are answers to chargers. And those answers are chariots. If I had not played the two armored giant spearmen and played another heavy chariot, or even in a, a medium chariot, I could have done really really well in that battle and I might have cleaned up those kills. Let's take a look at the end battle card here. Show you some of the points and statistics. That 345 kills is only 1387 value. Again, we're talking about a lot of rabble to make up those first like 400 or so points of that. But the rest of it was against renowned Dardanian sworn fighters. 34,000 points of damage really really impressive display if you ask me and what did i say about first seeing archilocos 240 kills unfortunately this time i wasn't able to pay for her because she spent most of that time fighting the rabble uh, i do appreciate that this uh, player did bring rabble to help tie down some of those um some of those more threatening units he was even surprisingly able to use two rabble to deal about 66 percent of the damage to this reinforced chariot um again really impressive and it was surprising to me how long it took those chariots to just march right through all those rabble i think i got caught into the fight too too much while i was trying to micro my army elsewhere um other grand displays the salma spearman of the 12 12 this one of 12 38 not not a bad showing for a front line when you need them to hold they don't tend to earn as many points but when they do earn those points that's 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 pretty darn good the uh, Armored Giant Spearman, as you can see here, completely negated from the fight because they only got those kills against against Rabble, and I didn't have effective targets for them to fight, like Chariots. Farseeing Archilocos, 923. Glorious Neotolemus, 2178. Holding the line in the middle. This one is actually my points MVP ahead of the Reinforced Chariots. And I managed to do a pretty good job with my Ravager, too, at 1241. Um, that actually, he did pay for himself in this battle. Let's look at the winning faction, though. 980 points on the hero, 366. 781 points on the Stardanian Rabble. Wow. Um, 358, 434, 284. He really got value out of his Rabble, which just unfortunate for me in the end. 996, this one paid for itself. This one did not. This one did not. This one did not. This one definitely didn't. And this one, 1356, very good showing. 909 with this charger, 1083 with that charger, and 1104 with this charger. None of them paying for themselves. And then 1715 with the Harpy Fiend. So even though my opponent, Tom, won the day, the MVP is, in fact, Glorious Neotolemus. What did you think of that fight? Do you think this is actually Core Guy in disguise? Or do you think that he's had enough of an effect on the, on the on the quick battle scene that other players are actually starting to emulate him, that they think that this is the meta build? I don't think this is a good build. I still don't think it is. I, granted, I've lost to it a couple of times. I'm not exactly in top form myself. I've not been able to play as much as I want to. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments, all right? In the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Ta-ta. I love you all. See you guys in the next video. If you want to support the channel, come check out my Ko-Fi, okay? See you.